FAA confirmed that FAA gonna approve Starship launch from Texas and NASA SLS again. Space is filled with stars and planets beyond our wildest imaginations, and so is the news surrounding it. In another hit to Elon Musk's plans and ambitions to take mankind to Mars, the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration has delayed the completion of its environmental review of SpaceX's Starship program by another two weeks to June 13th. In other news, the launch of NASA's SLS is entering a crucial stage, with NASA planning to take another crack at a crucial fueling test of its space launch system mega rocket on June 19th. Welcome to our channel, where we have lots to talk about today. From the constant battle between the FAA and SpaceX to the NASA SLS, we have it all covered. Will the FAA finally fulfill its commitment and release the documents deciding the fate of the Boca Chica launch site, or will there be yet another delay? Will NASA successfully carry out a fueling test this time, or face disaster like the last time? Well, we have all the updates for you, so stick around to the end as we answer all these questions and more. So let's dive right in. The Federal Aviation Administration on Tuesday again delayed completing a final environmental assessment of the proposed SpaceX Starship spacecraft and Super Heavy rocket program in Boca Chica, Texas until June 13th. That review, known as Programmatic Environmental Assessment PEA, is gauging the environmental impacts of SpaceX's Starbase site in South Texas, where the company builds and tests its giant Starship vehicle. The FAA released a draft PEA last September saying at the time that the final report would likely be done by the end of the year. But the agency has repeatedly pushed the deadline back, saying it needs more time to consult with the other government departments and to analyze the thousands of public comments submitted in response to the draft. But all is not lost. There may be a positive way to look at this news too. After multiple month-long delays, the FAA will soon release a key document related to the fate of SpaceX's starbase in Boca Chica, Texas. The FAA said it now has set a date for publication of the final Programmatic Environmental Assessment, or PEA, for the SpaceX Starship Super Heavy Launch Vehicle program at Starbase. The final PEA should be available within two weeks. Its publication will be a major step forward in SpaceX's ability to launch Starship from the site, which is located near environmentally sensitive coastal wetlands. In early May, SpaceX President Gwen Shotwell said she expects Starship will make its maiden orbital flight sometime this summer. It could be as soon as this month, though that now seems unrealistic given the timing of the FAA's release of the PEA. At the same conference, Shotwell stated again SpaceX's goal of putting human beings on Mars within this decade. She reiterated the interplanetary plan during an interview on CNBC on May 6, 2022. In March, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk expressed hope the company could fly the Starship heavy lift vehicle in orbit as early as this month. Musk's declaration coincided with the FAA receiving a favorable environmental impact report on SpaceX's plans to expand the Starbase launch facility in Boca Chica, Texas. Musk's enhancement came three weeks after the U.S. Department of the Interior's Fish and Wildlife Service sent the document to the FAA for review. It conducted a detailed 141-page environmental review of SpaceX's plans to expand launches in Texas. News that the draft BCO, Biological and Conference Opinion, was in the FAA's hands came from an exclusive report from the broadcast network CNBC, which obtained it through a Freedom of Information Act request. The report deals mainly with a group of endangered species living on the Starbase property and in the coastal wetlands surrounding it. The area is home to two species of endangered wildcats, the ocelot and the jagrundi, the northern aplomando falcon, a pair of shorebirds, the piping clover and the red knot, and four species of sea turtles, the Kemp's ridley, loggerhead, Hawksbill, Green and Leatherback also live in the area. So, are you guys having a good time? We've talked at great length about the implications of the FAA's environmental review on SpaceX's mission, but you guys must be wondering about the failed wet dress rehearsal of NASA's SLS and where NASA goes from here. So, while you think, do subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon to receive instant notification about all our future videos. SLS will make its debut on the upcoming Artemis 1 mission, which will send an uncrewed Orion capsule on a journey around the moon. But before Artemis 1 can lift off, its SLS and Orion need to complete a crucial series of pre-launch tests, known as a wet dress rehearsal. In a call with reporters on May 27th, NASA officials announced that they plan to start rolling the Artemis 1 out from the huge vehicle assembly building at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida to Launch Pad 39B at around midnight on June 6th. 
it won't be Artemis 1's first rollout. NASA's first run at an Artemis 1 wet dress began on April 1st, about two weeks after the moon rocket initially rolled out from the VAB. Following a similar timeline for vehicle checkouts at the pad at this time around, NASA officials said they expect to begin the roughly 48-hour wet dress rehearsal on June 19th. Several technical problems arose at the pad during last month's wet dress, including a stuck valve and a hydrogen leak in one of the umbilical lines connected to the SLS to its mobile launch tower. The Artemis 1 team attempted to fuel the SLS three times, but ended up scrubbing the wet dress, eventually rolling the Artemis 1 stack back into the VAB for repairs on April 25th. NASA officials outlined several of these fixes during Friday's call. For the leaky umbilical, for example, it was found that flange boots had inadvertently loosened, compromising their seal. A helium check valve and related hardware were replaced on the SLS's upper stage, which is called the Interim Chirogenic Propulsion Stage. Modifications were also made to the ICPS umbilical boots, which were involved in the quick disconnect between SLS and the mobile launch tower during liftoff. Additional leak detectors were also added to components of the system responsible for handling liquid nitrogen, NASA officials said. Cliff Lanham, the senior vehicle operations manager for KCS's Exploration Ground Systems program, highlighted some of the Artemis 1 work that NASA has begun ahead of schedule thanks to the SLS rollback to the VAB. For instance, teams have partially installed payloads inside the Orion capsule and replaced the remaining ground system plates with flight plates to cover the vehicle's instrumentation. That adjustment, Lanham said, will give the vehicle better protection from Florida's hot, humid and often rainy weather especially during the summer months. While the SLS has been undergoing maintenance in the VAB, Payet 39B also received some needed upgrades. Part of the SLS wet dress rehearsal requires fueling and draining the rocket of propellant to stimulate the procedures leading up to an actual launch. Gaseous nitrogen is used at the pad to purge the rocket's cavities and dry the umbilicals, and Pad 39B was able to receive a capacity boost over the past few weeks. Because it's such a big rocket, we require a proportional amount of commodities. Tom Whitmire, NASA's Deputy Associate Administrator for Common Exploration Systems, said during Friday's call, the increased capacity will allow SLS to undergo more extensive checks at the launch pad, including a 32-hour test run of the nitrogen system to simulate consumption for the rocket during launch, as well as the ground systems and avionics. The vehicle itself is a very straightforward vehicle, but anytime you get into loading operations with chirogenics, it's something that you have to take a step at a time, Whitmire said. If the wet dress goes well this time around, the Artemis 1 team can start prepping for an actual liftoff. NASA officials have said that they're aiming to launch Artemis 1 this August, though they won't set an official target date until the wet dress is complete and all data have been analyzed. And that's all we've got for you today. So how long do we have to wait before SpaceX finally gets the green light from the FAA? Will NASA be able to make fixes to the faulty SLS in time and stay on schedule for the Artemis 1 mission? Let us know in the comments below. And if you want to watch more of our amazing videos, then stay tuned.